Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Man, I love that song. The song's called Money Can't Buy. It's by Mark Pogue. Uh, it's from his new album, Through the Fire. I say new, it's about a year old now, but um, awesome album. And if you. Uh, want to check it out, feel free to go to our website, wehelpyouthrive.com forward slash radio. A link to the whole album's there. I encourage you, check out Mark's album because it is totally worth it and it rocks. Um, so thanks, Mark, for allowing me to be able to use a little bit of the intro of that song as the intro into our show. And now thank you. Thank you for listening. I am so glad you guys are here with us today. I am so glad that you would honor us by taking a little bit of time out of your day and listening to this episode. Um, Some of you, this may be your first time, and if it is, welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. I'm glad you found us. We'd love to hear more about how you did find us. Uh, Feel free to hashtag Thriving Entrepreneur, Um, you know, either on Facebook or Twitter. We're looking at those constantly, and you can say, you know, hey, I found this new uh, show called Thriving Entrepreneur, uh, and then tell us how and where you found it. You know, maybe you're listening to us on iTunes or iHeart. Maybe you're listening directly through Blog Talk Radio. Maybe you're listening on Speak Up Talk Radio Network. Or maybe you're listening to one of the AMFM 24-7 providers. Um, you know, whichever one of the stations or websites, um, there are others that uh, you may be listening to. I appreciate having you here. And uh, we thank you for your time, for your patronage, and for your desire to want to be, to live as a thriving entrepreneur. So today, we want to talk about probably one of the, if not the most important part of our life, and that's family. Um, You know, a lot of times, each of us, I think, gets to a place in our life, um, and, and it varies uh, what age that might happen to you based on life experience, where you tend to isolate. You push everybody away, and you want to live as an island. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes for some folks, that's while they actually are in a family unit, in a core family. Um, for others, it's when they've gone out into the world on their own, and, uh, you know, they're living on their own. Uh, And they just, uh, in either of those cases, we just, you know, we kind of isolate ourselves from the world. I remember in my own life, um, you know, one of the incidences that I remember this really strongly, um, right after my first marriage fell apart uh, and my wife and I had gotten divorced and all of that process, uh, there was an agreement uh, written in the, you know, in the divorce papers as to how... Uh, the children would, you know, go back and forth between our houses and all of that craziness that is divorce when you have children. Um, And it just happened to turn out, I think they used a system like, you know, you get, uh, you know, new, you get Thanksgiving in even years and you get, you know, Christmas in even years or something like that kind of thing. It was totally arbitrary, something that was as fair as you can possibly do it. Um, and it just so happened to that very first year, Thanksgiving um, was was hers. Uh, and for some of you who know the story of my first marriage and the breakup of that, you know, you know that, uh, you know, she dealt with drug addiction problems um, and had some very serious personal issues that she was going through. And um, so it wasn't very long into the divorce that the children didn't see her much. But early on then, uh, Thanksgiving came around, and that was when she still uh, was most of the time seeing the children at her time. I had custody of the kids, um, you know, but it happened to be her weekend. 
um, or, or, you know, however that works, you know, as far as Thanksgiving goes. And um, I remember that I had some invitations to go some places, um, but I just stayed home. Um, and there were some good parts of that. I don't want to oversell this as, you know, like I was laying in a corner weeping or licking my wounds. There's actually some good parts of that aloneness. But I also remember um, very, very, very vividly uh, there was a point on Thanksgiving evening where I was sitting alone in the dark. Uh, now, before you freak out about that, anybody that knows me knows I am not a light bulb person. I am the kind of guy that, uh, you know, it would not be weird to find me sitting in front of my computer or watching television and every other light in the house being out. So uh, that I was sitting in the house and it had gotten dark um, and I was sitting there with no lights on is not, uh, well, maybe it is. I don't know. Those of you that are therapists, feel free to write in, call in, tell me, you know, Steve, that's a real serious sign. <laughs> it's very possible it was. But, um, you know, I was sitting there in the dark and I remember just really feeling strongly in that moment. It passed pretty quickly, but I remember feeling really strongly in that moment uh, that I just wanted to isolate completely. That I wanted to barricade myself, as it were, uh, in the in the you know in in that house uh, in the dark, and just repel everybody, be completely alone. Um, and uh, you know, I had a similar incident like that uh, not that long ago. Many of you know uh, that our youngest daughter Maya was diagnosed with uh, AML. It's a pretty rare form of leukemia. Um, and although she's doing amazingly now, I, I don't want to bury the lead on that. She's doing great. She's come through all of her treatment. She's cancer free. Um, and there's a high probability actually that um, it will be a blip out of the entirety of her life, but it was a really extreme situation. And, uh, you know, Kathy, of course, was, you know, almost 24-7, uh, you know, always as close to her side as she could be, obviously. Um, and so I was home alone. It just turned out that we happened to also have a major uh, water leak in the house, and so there was uh, construction crews banging around the house for more than a month replacing the water heater and pipes and walls and all kinds of craziness. And and um, I had another moment like that just recently in that time where because of all the noise and especially the dust in the air, uh, you know, because between my asthma and allergies and things, wasn't a really great environment. I probably should have been living somewhere else, honestly. But, um, you know, I was trying to maximize money so that we could be there to take care of Maya as much as possible. At least that's the rationalization I used. <laughs> so don't call me again on my crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, I was in my office and I had the door shut uh, to try to block out the noise. And also uh, I had another one of those incidences where, uh, you know, I was alone. I wasn't totally alone that time because I did have our little dog with us. The first time I didn't have a, an animal in the house. This time, you know, our little mocha was actually with me. So I wasn't quite as alone. But I did have a moment there where I just, you know, wanted to shut the whole world out and just, you know, I put on headphones and I watched uh, a movie actually on the internet on uh, the big screen that I have here. That's one of the two screens of my, on you know, for my computer setup. Um, and so we all go through that where we want to isolate. I mean, that's just a couple of incidences that I've experienced it in my own life. Um, and some of you may have felt that too. But what I told you all those stories for, hopefully they were interesting, <laughs> was to bring home the point that at one point or several places in our lives, we as people, it's very normal to want to isolate ourselves, to... Uh, insulate ourselves from everyone in the world and pull out, even from our nuclear family. And yet, family is so important. I can't stress enough 
how important family is. Now, sometimes your family of origin, uh, the people who literally were involved in the creation of what became your DNA, sometimes we have to move away from that. They are not good people. Um, a friend of my wife's was actually telling me, um, telling Kathy, and then Kathy was telling me that, um, you know, she stopped watching a particular show because the villain was reminding her of an incident where her own father was torturing and killing their animals in front of her. Not a great situation, not a uh, nuclear family that you want to bring your kids into and celebrate huge fun holidays with. Um, and I know other people where your nuclear family, the, your family of origin, whatever phrase you want to use with that, they're amazing people. They're such giving, wonderful people that, uh, you know, you can't imagine not having them in, their li in your life. Um, and so, you know, if you're blessed, if you have a great family, then you want to make sure you stay connected to them. Absolutely you do. Um, you know, and if if you've had whatever reasons um, that uh, that's not the best idea in your particular life, then um, what you want to do is make sure that you have um, a replacement family. And for some of us, um, you know, sometimes the replacement family is the uh, best thing that we could possibly have in our life, and that's, you know, is to have, um, you know, a group of people that we choose to be family with rather than the people who we had no choice in the matter. It just is what it is by DNA and genetics. Um, and in most of our lives, you know, it's kind of a combination of that. And some of those things that keep us away from the family may not be as important long-term as they feel like potentially right now right now as I'm saying this to you in this moment. Um, whichever way it is for you, you need people in your life that are at that deeper level, they're at that family level, that you share intimacy with, meaning that that deep stuff within you, um, you know, you get face to face with them and you really can be open and honest with them. We need that as people. We need family. Family is, like I said, if not the most, one of the most important things that we can have in our life. Um, and so maybe you're at one of those places in your life right now, like I was sharing a couple stories with me, where momentarily or for a longer period of time, you have insulated yourself. You have... Uh, built up walls and you are in a place where you are trying to live as an island totally alone do it on your own um, I'm not talking about you know you're uh, you know 18, 19, 20 years old and you know you're out to make your mark on the world but I'm talking about truly isolating yourself from the world um, if you're in that place I encourage you to just begin to contemplate the concept of uh of letting people in, of having your family be part of your life, or of creating a family that you can, again, like I said, get face-to-face -face with, to do and share that deep, intimate stuff. You need that. You absolutely need somebody who you can laugh and cry and share things with in your life. Family is so important. And you will, I can just say this definitively, you will not live as a thriving entrepreneur if you don't have some deeply intimate, emotional, social connections in your life. I'm not talking about a physical intimacy um, although hugs and things like that may be a part of it. But I'm talking about that deeper, that spiritual and mental, psychological, emotional connection. We absolutely have to have that as people. Um, and so if you are in one of those isolation spots at this point in your life, um, I encourage you, uh, no judgment, first of all. It's all right. But then just open up the window for the possibility today that you could remove the isolation from your life, that you could step away from it, 
um, and you could really begin to allow people again into your life just in small ways just a little bit today and then step up more and more until you really truly do have intimate deep relationships with family in your life it absolutely is imperative and one of the primary steps of you being able to live as a thriving entrepreneur You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to We Help youthrive.com check us out and find out how you can be a best selling author today welcome back to thriving entrepreneur this is Steve welcome back today we're going to be talking the whole entire episode about family about the importance of family in our lives in order to help us live as thriving entrepreneurs. And so, of course, one of the best ways to bring that home is to bring to you one of our best-selling authors, international best-selling author, Faith Marshall. Her book is called I Love You, Mom. And I'm going to tell you more about it here in just a second, but I just want you to take that energy and begin to think about it. Um, We want her to share the deep stuff of her personal situation that she went through with her mom to help give you some insight of the things that people go through as well as begin to hopefully open the door a little bit for you to see how intricately a part of our lives, our mothers are, our families are, and how much we need family in our life in order to live as a thriving entrepreneur. Our mothers are so important, so impactful in our lives. Um, But as they age, things can happen. And often we see these vibrant individuals degrade into something that is less than who they were. This is a wonderful book we're going to talk about today that is both a journey as well as honor for this mother who meant so much to Faith, our author. Um, It's called Miss You, Mom, A Daughter's Journey into Dementia Land, written by Faith Marshall. Faith, thanks for being on the show with us today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me, Steve. So... um, You know, let's talk a little bit just to begin with about you and your mom. Tell us a little bit of the background of you guys' story. Well, mom was a very vibrant woman who uh, many of her friends and myself aspired to even try to keep up with her. Uh, She just loved to travel. She loved to dance. She was just a very enthusiastic woman who she made an entrance into a room. You knew she was there. And... Um, where this journey took a left turn was when she started forgetting things. And we noticed a few things where she was confused on time of day and, and all of that. And then as, as I talk about in the book, um, the enlightening time for me was when I took her on a trip to Phoenix and it became more apparent that she was having issues. So we went back into the medical community to have her tested and And it was decided that she did have um, the onset of dementia. And with that, we, all you get is a diagnosis from the doctor and a prescription to see if this helps. And it's, it's truly a terminal, terminal illness at this point. And those of us trying to raise awareness are trying to change that. And, um, 
I was, I just felt lost. My whole family felt lost with what was happening with mom and not having any control over it, as you can imagine. Well, and in fact, it's a a subject that's very near and dear to both Kathy and I, um, you know, because her mom lived with us the last couple of years of her life and she had dementia. Um, It doesn't sound like quite as bad as your mom did at the end of her journey, but um, you know, we were in a position where most of the doctors didn't even believe us. You know, they thought we were wrong and make it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah, I, I do completely understand that because sometimes you have to convince them through their own denial as you're trying to fight your own denial and, you know, bringing that to the forefront. We all like to think, oh, she just didn't sleep very well, or, you know, you experienced it, you understand. Well, and people with dementia, this is one of the things that we found at least, they're very good at uh, getting through their day, getting by for a long period of time. Um, And so a lot of people that are just casually in their life, they don't see it. That is very true. It wasn't until after mom passed and I was going through her belongings, I found so many books on testing your memory. So she knew it was coming before she even shared it with us. She was buying books to help her test herself and see if she could improve her memory. So, um, you know, we could go on probably for hours with both the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to dementia. But... um, Tell me what is your biggest memory of, you know, the time when it really became clear to you that your mom definitely was having some issues with dementia? Um, I think the shock to me was the trip to Phoenix when, and that's covered in the book, so I won't go into too much detail, except it was an exciting trip. Um, we, we went, you know, Seattle to Phoenix and uh, we you know, did the rental car at the airport. And I had an, a wheelchair assist for mom because she just wasn't getting around with her cane at, at any fast speed anyway, at that point. And um, I went and got the rental car, circled back around, got her in the car and we drove, we were in the car for quite some time and we were talking and everything, you know, seemed normal to me. And then we checked into the timeshare and in a little while we were going to head out to go grocery shopping. And mom said, where did that nice girl go that picked us up at the airport? And for me, that was a, oh my gosh, I was sitting right next to you. You were talking to me the whole time. What do you mean? Where'd that nice girl go? And that was me. Mom just remembered me as the nice girl in the airport that, you know, that picked them up. And so that was the beginning of that discovery trip is what I call it. Um, I was in my own denial. I kidded around about it, but I really struggled with that one because she was sitting right next to me. And then she knew, she knew who I was, you know, it would, it was like a switch that they turn on and off. (laughs) But I think that's the biggest fear that all of us have is, will my mom remember me? And I, just didn't ask that question through her journey. I just assumed she knew who I was. I felt better about that, even when she would forget and ask questions that led me to believe that there was little doubt there. But um, what I wanted to do was get through my grief through this. So I started journaling while she was still alive. And that is how the book evolved. I think that's really important and very powerful, Um, you know, because when you're in the thick of it, a lot of those things pass and yet they can be very precious moments as well. Um, Did you find, I mean, I know we found some with, with Kathy's mom that she also became a little bit more open with some of the stories when she remembered them, you know, things that in years past, she had kind of kept to herself. Did you find that to be true with your mom? Oh, yes. It was an amazing discovery. She would start talking about her time in school or um, she graduated from West Seattle High School. And at one point, she remembered her whole, um, the school song and sang it 
and it was, you know, things that were missed in my growing up, things she never brought up, friends she talked about, jobs she had. It's, it's truly a step back, you know, a journey back in time. They seem to remember more from the past than they do the present. So somebody that's listening that has a parent or a loved one that um, they've had maybe a moment, but they're not sure. Um, give us some ideas how a person can be sure if a person is just, you know, they forgot something because we all do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, or if they're really struggling with something like dementia. Well, they, the first thing is to check with their primary care doctor. Uh, because the primary care doctor would know the patient and be able to ask some key questions. That's where we started. And then he referred us to a neurologist. And the neurologist is the one who can really do what there is called the neuropsyche eval that can evaluate them. And mom had a couple of those, and I did include a reference to that in the book as well as an example for readers. It's that, it's like any medical test. You, you, fear what the result will be, but it really is a good idea to get that diagnosis early because there are so many medications that can help um, if, they're, if it's caught early enough. So don't let your fear get in the way of finding out for sure because it can help to have the early diagnosis. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I would say also, you know, trust your gut. Um, even exactly. If yeah, you know, I mean, even if your mom is denying it, even if your whole family tells you you're crazy, <laughs> um, you know, what what would be the worst that happened? The test comes back and says, no, she's actually doing better than you are. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, and sometimes you have to figure out a way to coerce them to go to the doctor and ask the question because everyone's in denial at that point. So my brother reached out to the doctor privately and said, this is what the appointment's really about we're bringing mom in to have her, have you check her blood pressure, but we really want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the doctor partnered with us in that. Mm. And that's important. I mean, I think it's a good idea just in general, um, as your parents begin to age to make sure that they do have a good primary care physician. Yes. Such a huge difference between, you know, the good and the bad in mm. that particular situation, you know? Yeah, yeah. When we were all in our 20s, which, you know, we're not anymore, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> go to whatever fly-by-night clinic and it was no big deal. But, you know, as we get older, it's important to have, uh, you know, a good medical team uh, supporting you throughout the course of your journey. It is, and it's important to have that the one doctor that knows what all the medications are to make sure they're not competing with each other because there are medications that can represent themselves with, a, with dementia as a side effect as well. So you really, you've really got to stay on track with all of that and, and step in and help mom to know what's going on. Whereas usually we respect our parents and we allow them you know, those personal decisions but there's a time where you really do have to step in and help. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I know that the other part of the book is, I mean, I love how you dealt with the very difficult situation, but I also love the memorial to your mom part that is very much a part of the book. So um, could you take just a minute or two and just tell us a little bit about your mom and how cool of a person she was? Oh my goodness. She, I couldn't keep up with her. Um, when we would try to schedule a family event, she was just, you know, well, I'm available Wednesday night. That's the only night I've got dance rehearsal on Tuesday. I've got, you know, blah, 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 luncheon and dress rehearsal. And <laughs> it was just ongoing. And so to, to, uh, to watch her slow down a little bit was a struggle, but my daughters and I really enjoyed going and watching my mom perform and dancing. Um, she was in a group that traveled and went on cruise ships and performed. And as mom would say, they performed in the old folks home where mom sometimes was older than the people in the old folks home, but she didn't look at life in that perspective. She worked retail. She had wonderful social skills and could just, 
chat anybody up and start a conversation. And uh, she paid for my daughters to have dance lessons. So she, she would make sure that they were follow, following in her footsteps, literally. And uh, they, they just enjoyed that relationship with their grandma as well. And mom, um, with her love of travel, then we would travel for my daughter's dance competitions. And uh, she was always the best backstage grandma ever with the makeup and the hair. She had all that down. And um, to watch her decline was was just a struggle. But um, we'll learn more about that in the book. And I certainly hope that, hope that sharing my story with you about mom's journey that you can find that there is some joyful moments, then you need to relish those joyful moments in the journey and do our best to keep it fun and uh, use of music and dancing and things that they can remember without actually trying to remember. The brain is amazing. And uh, I learned a lot through this journey and I hope to share with others how to navigate it well and that's one of the things i love most about the book is is that you know it is very personal um and uh i even questioned you know when i was first reading through it you know is this going to be a book that uh you know you're going to leave feeling really sad by the time you <laughs> i um, hope not <laughs> and uh, yeah well and i don't think it is i think it does a really good job of allowing a person to be able to say me too, yeah, I'm going through this and feel that sense of togetherness um, that people dealing with a common issue can have. Yes, um, we really need that community. Yeah, and also to celebrate um, the people in our lives that are going through this situation. Um, and then last but not least, of course, there are some really good practical tips um, for just some things that you can do. Uh, and you mentioned a couple of those, but can you go into a little bit more detail about some ways that you can, you know, not just survive, but really thrive in the experience of helping somebody through dementia land? Sure. Well, let me ask you this, Steve, which was your favorite tip? Oh gosh. Do I have to pick one? (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, I, I like the redirect um, concept the best. You know, the you were even alluding to it earlier about the whole, um, you know, dancing with them, using music, those kind of things that aren't specifically trying to sit down with them and say, you know, now mom, try to remember this, you know, <laughs> because that's frustrating both for you and for them and doesn't usually end up resolving it much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess... In some cases, the redirect was also me, redirecting me. Um, One of them was that I still to this day swear that mom could see spirits and that dad would come visit her because I would go to the nursing home and I'd walk in and mom would say, oh, you just missed your dad or you just missed your grandma. And others just chalk that up to hallucinating, but I with my spiritual background, I just really feel like she was really seeing dad. And rather than try to debate with her that dad had passed away or that her mom had passed away, I just learned to say, Oh, I'm sorry. I missed him. Or, uh, what did he, what did he have to say? And she would tell me that she was, you know, she was going to meet him for dinner or her mind was again, back in the past when dad was still alive. And, um, then other times, for redirecting when she would be upset about something, she'd start to get fixated on something she had in her head that it was just better for me to change the subject. Um, You know, not debating over whether she was going to put her shoes on or not, just go ahead and wheel her down, say, mom, let's go to the ice cream social and wheel her down to the cafeteria as a distraction. And sometimes it's hard for us in our human brain when we want things to be real and present and right to step aside and just let that dementia land, whatever trip Corrine was taking, just go with her. 
I'll share the funniest story with you. Well, maybe not the funniest, but one of the funny stories that we dealt with with Kathy's mom. Um, just before she moved in with us, she um, had several times when she went to the emergency room and she called us in the middle of the night one night and said that she needed to go. Um, and I jumped in the car and rushed down there. We were about 15-ish, maybe 20 minutes from her house. And I got there, you know, and I'm in that sort of partial panic, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. you know, where you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get her to the emergency room immediately. Mm-hmm. And she's sitting at her desk, filling out every one of her bills, writing the check, you know, and, and she's not real fast at this point at writing checks. Right. You know? <laughs> and she did every single bill and she wrote, and I'm sitting there going, mom, don't you need to go to the emergency room? She's like, yes, but I got to get these done in case you need to be there. Um, I wouldn't want my bills to be like. And sometimes you just have to let them, you know, I mean, it's not like you can really fight it with them. It's like, okay, you know, another five minutes. Um, I don't think it had any negative impact, you know. Right. She needed to finish what she started while she had it in the forefront of her mind. Yeah. So what is one tip that we can leave um, our listeners with that they could do um, to really begin to embrace the journey into dementia land rather than fighting against it? Oh, that's a hard one. One tip. Um, I think what helped us as, (laughs) pardon? You can do more than one if you need to. (laughs) (laughs) I think what helped us most as a family looking back was communicating with each other. Having that, that knowledge we would share each visit that we had with mom or conversation or mom called me at two in the morning for blah, blah, blah. We would communicate with each other. And we had this whole cycle of, you know, in those days it was email. Now we could have a Facebook private Facebook group, I suppose, but just a way to update relatives that weren't all going at the same time or even had time to go. It it kept the family um, informed. This doctor visit was this, the doctor said that there was still, each of us dealt with the denial in our own way. So I can't say that it was, you know, we were all in the same level of acceptance, but communicating with family in some kind of a way so that everyone's on the same page. And there's usually one key person who's attending most of the doctor visits or even the the caregiver that, um, feels not understood. So by sharing that communication, I think it at least keeps the family informed um, so that they can, when the, when the time comes to make those joint decisions, that they've all been following the journey as it goes and uh, can help each other and support each other. I think the family support was key in our success. The book is called Miss You Mom, A Daughter's Journey into Dementia Land by Faith Marshall. It is an Amazon international best-selling book, and it is totally worth getting, um, reading through both to share with Faith uh, the journey that she took with her mom, as well as get some insights into things that you may be dealing with with your own parents. Faith, thanks so much for spending some time with us on the show today. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me. I want to make sure I get this part correct because I'm pretty sure when we were doing this recording, I may have misspoke it. The title of the book is I Miss You, Mom. It's important that you put the word I, I Miss You, Mom. It's I Miss You, Mom, A Daughter's Journey into Dementia Land by Faith Marshall. Do please check it out on Amazon today. It is an amazing book. Um, It really does give great insight into both Faith's uh, own journey, but also into, um, you know, some opening our eyes of how important our moms are to us and what we can do for people um, in our lives that we love in those moments, but also how we can cherish the moments 
before that and and during that and all of that. I really encourage you check out I Miss You, Mom, A Daughter's Journey into Dementia Land by Faith Marshall. Um, I would be remiss. I would be a horrible child if I didn't at this moment give a shout out to my own mother. Um, my mom is an amazing individual. She's been so supportive of everything I've done my whole entire life. Um, you know, and I just really appreciate you, Mom. I hope you know that regardless of whether we're talking every day or it's been weeks before since we've traded the last email, that I love you, um, that you are the most amazing woman I know, and that I appreciate all that you do, all that you've done for me in all of my life. Um, I really want to make sure that my own mom knows how special she is. Um, this year, if you're listening live, not yet. I mean, it's a couple months away, but this year my mom will actually turn 80 years old. Um, and so in some ways, uh, kind of in the back of my head, we have been kind of celebrating all year that uh, this is kind of a really cool milestone for my mom that she's made it to 80. She still works full time. Really an amazing lady. Uh, and really, honestly, if she outlived me and all of my brothers, I would not be surprised at all. She's one of the most amazing, incredible, vibrant individuals I know. And so just a shout out real quick to my own mom. Mom, I love you. Thank you for all that you've done always and still continue to do in my life. For those of you that have somebody special like that in your life, take a minute, reach out to them and say to them, I love you. Say it while it can be said. Um, and really let people that we know that are special to us how much we love them. That's a great way to be able to live as a thriving entrepreneur. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to we help you thrive.com check us out and find out how you can be a best-selling author today welcome back to thriving entrepreneur this is steve welcome back did you give a shout out real quick to somebody in your life that you love to a parent to your mother your father the different people in your life that make your life special i hope you did if you haven't do take a moment and reach out to them. Let them know how much you love and appreciate them. Family. That's what we're talking about in this whole episode is family. Family is so important, so necessary. You are who you are both because of and in some cases in spite of the family you came from. The people that brought you into this world the birth parents that you have um, were flawed individuals. They may be still vibrant and alive and amazing like my parents are. And I, I wish for every single person listening that that was true. I know for some of you it isn't. For some of you, um, you know, your experience with your birth parents was to say less than would be uh, diminishing how bad it was. Uh, you know, for some people like Kathy, um, you never have ever met the people whose DNA you share. There were other people who came in, um, adopted you, raised you, fostered you, whatever the case might be. Um, you know, sometimes it's the house we live in and they pour stuff into us and help make and shape who we are. Other times it's 
you know, people that we become very close to at a boys and girls club or at school or at church um, that really insert themselves into our lives and make us better people because of their presence in us, in, in our lives. Um, and uh, it's important that we realize the contribution that a person like that makes in our life and how necessary and important people like that are to us. I hope you know that. Um, you know, I think most of the time, I think we're aware of it. And I think a lot of times, especially with uh, the family of origin that we have and or with the family that we've surrounded ourselves with, it's real easy to just have them there always and take them for granted. Um, you know, about a month from now is Mother's Day. This, again, of course, is assuming you're listening live. And I hope you really will and that you do have somebody that you can really celebrate Mother's Day for and with. Do something special for them. You know, for a lot of our moms, especially those of you that are my age, you know, yes, I'm 51. For those of you that didn't do the math on, you know, stuff I was talking about earlier in the show, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot. And I can tell you that if you were five years old, it still wouldn't take a lot for most moms. You know, you remember the macaroni necklaces we used to make for our mom? <laughs> I really got to wonder. You know, I mean, mom always did such a great job of really appreciating those things. Um, and it's so important. So, you know, take this Mother's Day and just reach out and say to your mom, Mom, I love you. Make a phone call. Take a whole two minutes out of your day. Call your mom on the phone. Maybe your mom was too flawed of an individual and she did things that are unspeakable. It's okay today, on Mother's Day, which isn't today, but, you know, on Mother's Day, or today, to just pick up the phone and say, hey, mom, I love you. Remember that if a person has done something that's unforgivable, that we forgive them because the forgiveness is for us. The forgiveness does not change them a bit. And the lack of forgiveness doesn't change them a bit. <laughs> but it changes us. And so if those people, if your mom, your father, whoever, has failed you, I encourage you to release them to the life that they've committed for themselves. Forgive. And then just simply tell them that you appreciate them. Tell them thank you for bringing you into the world. Whatever the level is, because I know that there are some people out there that, you know, calling them on the phone and saying, hey, I love you. I really appreciate you. You're just the best. That would be disingenuous, and I'm not suggesting that at all. But just simply to say, thank you. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing deep, nothing ungenuine, but even just to say thank you. It's important that we do that with all the different, you know, in June, there's going to be Father's Day and an opportunity again for us to reach out to a potentially very flawed individual and just say whatever. Again, I'm so fortunate because I had such great parents. And so calling them on a special day, their birthdays or a holiday like Mother's and Fa Mother and Father's Day, it's easy. You know, I want to call them and say, hey, you know what? I love you. Thank you. Have a great day. But if that's tough for you, just to be able to connect, send them a Facebook post. You know, hey, thank you for bringing me into this world. Don't discount the importance of your family, of the connection that you need to family. And don't injure yourself by hanging on to things that you shouldn't. 
I didn't really expect the show to go this way. Um, you know, I really expected that we would spend more time in celebration of our families, but I just feel very strongly led that somebody needs to hear that. And as I've taught my, uh, my directors in our group, as they're now beginning to, uh, to create their radio shows for our brand new International Authors Network Radio that will be coming soon. If I only, just like I was telling them, you know, it's all about the one. And if I only reach just one person ever with the message of how special you are and how important family is and how okay it is today to say I love you, to say thank you, and then most importantly, to make sure that you've invested in surrounding yourself with people who are powerful in your life, who are going to make a positive impact, and who you can get face-to-face with and really have true, deep, intimate connection on an emotional and spiritual level with. You need that. It's absolutely imperative. The fundamental core of you listening to this show is because you want to be a thriving entrepreneur. And the foundational piece of thriving in life has to do with always remembering to surround ourselves with family, to be connected, and to allow ourselves to be loved. And that is step one in being a thriving entrepreneur. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to wehelpyouthrive.com, check us out, and find out how you can be a best-selling author today. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. All right. Did you think about some people in your life that you love and appreciate? I hope there is somebody that during the course of this show that uh, you remembered fondly, that you thought of, and that if you haven't already, that you will, before today's over, that you'll reach out to them and you'll say, you know what, I love you. That's why it was so important to me right at the end of the uh, the segment with Faith, with uh, you know what I had recorded with her, that I made sure that I thanked my own mom. You know, it's our moms for most of us are so important in our life, and it's important that we share our gratitude with them. I also love the book because it points out to you a little bit different kind of a book than some of the others. Some of the books that we brought to you are very practical step-by-step guides, and there's some really good practical stuff in Faith's book. Um, So don't get me wrong about that. But some of them are very very analytical. Um, Not in a bad way, but very much, uh, you know, hey, if you just do these five things, you know, then this thing will happen. Others of them are more emotionally driven. They're what we typically call a legacy book. Um, It's about a message or a story that you're driven to have to get out, that you have to share with the world. And yes, you hope that something in it will make a difference. But even if nobody ever heard it, you know it has to be out there. I think of Errol Abramson's book, You Can Too, and Errol... Uh, you know, not only has helped, but continues to help millions of people 
uh, embrace a lifestyle and be uh, more of an entrepreneur, more of a success in life than most of us could have ever even imagined. But his book was very much a legacy book. It was very much a, you know, here's the story of my whole life. Here's how tough it was as a, as a young kid, you know, growing up on the streets and, and so on and so forth all the way through. And many people, you know, that's what they need to put out as a legacy book. And maybe you've held off joining us at bestsellersguild.com because you've been thinking, well, you know, I don't really have a self-help book. I don't really have a how-to book. I don't really have a book that's, you know, uh, you know, spiritual in nature or metaphysical in nature or whatever, you know, critique you may have put on a particular episode you've heard. But um, what you have is a story. And those stories are so important because without your story being told, it's lost. I've used the example before, but I'll use it again because it's such a good one. Um, you know, as Kathy's been researching her family of origin, you know, now that she found uh, who her birth mother was, she had passed before Kathy met her, but um, she she dug back into her family of origin story and found that one of her great great grandfathers was essentially one of the very very first settlers in all of the state of Washington, um, and uh, huge stuff. But basically, the only things that you can find about him in his life are mostly having to do with stuff that was written in the paper. Um, at the time of his death. And fortunately, he was a big enough deal in his community that quite a bit was written about him at the time of his death. But for many people, that isn't the case. And so if you don't share your story, who's going to? I want to see your story shared. I'd love to be part of that legacy package that you put out. If it's only for your saying to the world, hey, I was here, that would be enough. But here's another secret I'm going to tell you. In the sharing of that private stuff of your life, what you're going to discover is there is a whole lot of people whom that makes a huge difference in their life just by your sharing it. And so I hope that you will take to heart that and that you will seek out the ability to do your legacy book, a how-to book, um, heck, we even have Fiction Fridays in Best Sellers Guild, so if you've got a fiction story, we can help you with that too. It all starts by joining us at bestsellersguild.com. It's a free group. Bestsellersguild.com will take you to Facebook, to our group. You asked to join. We would love to have you as a member. There's over 2,700 people there uh, currently today if you're listening live and, and growing all the time. And we're here to share with each other, to share our lives and our stories. Because your story is important. Because you are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose. And the world needs you. They need your story. They need who you are. It helps us all be better. Please know that Kathy and I are here to help you live every day of your life as a thriving entrepreneur. Until next time, have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to we help 
youthrive.com. Check us out and find out how you can be a best-selling author today.